Hi, welcome to the fourth edition of my podcast, Books from Abhinav. I'm Abhinav Hansaraman, your host for this show. In the previous episodes, we looked at Adam Grant's Give and Take, Manu Pillai's The Courtesan, The Mahatma and The Italian Brahmin, and Jeffrey Archer's Over My Dead Body. All three episodes are available in the description below. Today, we'll be looking at a book that was made into a very successful movie a couple of years after the book. The book is Big Shot by Michael Lewis. The movie is also by the same title. If you are not looking for a book to read, but still want to watch a movie that's fun, enriching and also teaches you something, I'd strongly recommend that you even stop watching this episode. Don't read the book, but go and watch the movie The Big Shot, which is available on Netflix. Even if you've not heard of the author Michael Lewis, there's a very good chance that you've seen movies that have been based on his books. For example, The Blind Side and Moneyball, two very popular movies, were based on Michael Lewis's books. Michael Lewis started off as a bond salesman in Salomon Brothers, then a venerated name in the bond industry and was at the peak of Wall Street. He quit his job to write more and his book Liar's Poker has massively influenced public perception of Wall Street in the 1980s. The 2008 Wall Street crash was perhaps the most important event of this century, second only to the coronavirus pandemic. While our generation has perhaps not been affected by the Wall Street crash, it is important to understand how the world's biggest, most sophisticated economy let things fail so bad that the entire world had to face severe consequences for years at end. Not only did this spur the Occupy Wall Street and other movements across the world, it also led to widespread acceptance of the fact that laypersons and experts often make mistakes in their understanding of the world. Especially when experts make mistakes, they find it hard to change their views or to even accept their errors. If you're looking for a good book that will teach you about the 2008 Wall Street crash and tells you a compelling story with fascinating characters, you should read this book. However, if you want to read about the man who made the most amount of money in the 2008 Wall Street crash, you should read Gregory Zuckerman's book called The Greatest Trade Ever. At the heart of this book and the 2008 Wall Street crash lie mortgage bonds. Now, what are mortgage bonds? Mortgage bonds are essentially a collection of thousands and hundreds of thousands of mortgages put into a single product essentially called a mortgage bond. The idea is this, if there is only one or two people you are giving a loan to and if one or two of them default on it, you suffer a massive loss. However, if you spread your risk across say 100,000 people, the chance of you recovering most of your money is very high. Mortgage bonds were considered particularly safe for three reasons. First. The US housing market had been growing at a phenomenal pace for over a couple of decades. Second, when you spread your risk of mortgage failures across multiple mortgages, the risk of overall failure is drastically reduced. Third, who is going to default on their mortgages and lose out on their houses, right? However, mortgage bonds turned out to be not so simple and not so safe after all. This book traces how they fail spectacularly and how they ruin the economy for years to come. However, even if the mortgage bonds failed and the economy failed, there are a lot of people who actually managed to make money by shorting these bonds or betting against these mortgage bonds. This book is their story. The heroes of the story are Dr. Michael Berry, an ex-neurologist who runs Cyan Capital, Steve Eisman, an outspoken hedge fund manager who seems to be a very rude but smart character, Two kids who started Cornwall Capital out of the garage of one of their parents and Greg Lipman, a Deutsche Bank trader. How these four men bet against the American dream of owning your house and come out unscathed and even profitable after the 2008 crash is what you find out in the next 250 pages. Now that the book is out of the way, here is the interesting trivia for today. We all know about sucralose, the artificial sweetening ingredient we use as a replacement for sugar to avoid the calories and other ill effects of sugar. When the sugar producing company Tate and Lyle Sweeteners and a research group headed by Leslie Hu were one day testing a chemical compound. However, they wanted to get some particular research and a couple of experiments performed on this compound. So they called up this other scientist and researcher called Shashikant Farnes and over the phone they told him to test the compound and do a couple of experiments. However, Fortunately, our man Fardness heard this incorrectly as taste the compound and he ended up tasting it. 
when he realized it was extremely sweet and wondered what the reasons were, he got back in touch with the research group. Subsequently, they realized that this new compound could be used as a replacement for sugar as an artificial sweetening ingredient. And that, my friends, is how the world got sucralose. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I enjoyed creating it. If you like the books I've recommended today and the trivia I've shared, please follow me on my newsletter and my blog available in the description below. Thanks and I hope you have a nice weekend.